1982, two nonprofit groups in the Las Vegas community, the Junior League of Las Vegas and the Allied Arts Council, had a vision for a hands-on museum for children. There weren't a lot of options for places to take kids um, when the idea of the Children's Museum came about. So rather than to compete with the Allied Arts Council and split whatever community resources there were to support such an activity, we proposed to the Allied Arts Council that we collaborate with them to develop the project. In 1984, the Children's Museum Project became its own nonprofit under the name Discovery, the Children's Museum. It was just a, some wonderful people within the community who had faith that we could do this. Um, and we started very small. In 1985, several temporary demonstration exhibits were tried out throughout the valley to gauge the public's interest in a hands-on children's museum. A lot of people didn't know what hands-on museums were about at the time because in their minds, you would just go to a museum and look at something in a case. It really helped the public understand what we were talking about and uh, we gained a lot of community support because the kids just loved it. For a period of five years, the museum moved from the fashion show mall to the lobby of the Centel Phone Company to a space in a Green Valley shopping center and then another space within the Nevada State Museum. The search for a permanent space for the museum ended when Clark County Library Director Charles Hunsberger proposed that the Children's Museum partner with the library district to build and share a permanent new building. The process of deciding how to build a children's museum and a children's library together was something that had never been done in America before. No one had ever really put those two things together. And we literally went all over the country looking at both children's libraries and children's museums. Then did a major campaign looking for the right architect. And we found Antoine Predock. And with funding from a bond issue, a gorgeous new space was built on Las Vegas Boulevard North. And that's when we were so blessed to meet uh, Christina Hickson, who was the new executor of the Ernest Lead Trust. And so as we began the process of then trying to finalize what kind of exhibits would we have and how much would they cost and how could we get them built in time, it was Christina Hickson who essentially gave us the seed money and the funding that we needed to essentially build the first set of permanent exhibits. The Lead Discovery Children's Museum opened its doors to the public on Sunday, September 9, 1990. When we opened the doors of that museum, it was like a whole new world opened up for the entire community. It was huge. I mean, really huge. The museum continued to thrive in downtown Las Vegas, offering more than 100 hands-on exhibits to the local community. After 16 years of wear and tear, the museum was looking to make some improvements and modernize its exhibits. In preparation, the board hired a new executive director, Linda Quinn, who recruited key leadership to facilitate these changes. I worked at a science and technology center in Charlotte, North Carolina for 13 years. And I was recruited to come because the um, former location needed a little TLC and needed to rebuild a little bit. In 2008, Steve Anderson and the Donald W. Reynolds Foundation became interested in helping to improve the museum. We felt like the LEAD uh, Children's Museum was a wonderful organization. They had opportunities for children, hands-on opportunities for children. We didn't think that the location was ideal, and so we were uh, looking for an opportunity to grow the organization and uh, improve its uh, physical location. We, just like the founding members, believed in our hearts that this community of ours that was nearing two million deserved no less than a world-class children's museum. It took a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of money that we would not have had if it wasn't for our community supporting us and embracing us in a very, very challenging time. Because if you remember 2008, 2009, is when the recession hit. We were tackling this $50 million question um, at one of the worst times economically that Las Vegas had faced since the 1940s. That's when the Donald W. Reynolds Foundation provided a very generous $43 million grant to the museum and also helped them secure a space for their new standalone building. 
Concurrent with our work with LEAD, we were also working uh, with the Smith Center. As plans developed for the Smith Center, it became obvious that plans for a second theater, which would have occupied the site where the museum is today, were not financially uh, viable. And so that was going to leave a gap in, in the development of the Smith Center block. We started investigating the possibility of moving the museum to this site. In 2010, the museum team celebrated the groundbreaking of the new Donald W. Reynolds Discovery Center, adjacent to the Smith Center in Symphony Park. Board President Troy Moser lent his expertise as an architect to coordinate and manage the design and construction of the new museum. And attorney Mike Mathis, also a board trustee, made sure the myriad of legal documents, permissions, and contracts were in order. But in order for any of this to come to fruition, more funding was needed. Raising that last $7 million was daunting. If not for the kickstart by the Sands Foundation, followed by Windsong Trust, and then ultimately Mary Kay Cashman, who helped us with the transitional funds, followed by a host of very benevolent families and corporations, we would have never seen our doors open. On March 9th, 2013, the new Discovery Children's Museum opened its doors to the public and set a new standard for interactive education in Las Vegas. So opening day was absolutely electric. It was amazing. But um, I think it was probably maybe months later that I was able to sit and kind of take in, oh my gosh, we built this amazing experience and it's now here in Southern Nevada. We have a lot to be proud of here. As I watched my grandchild play in the waterworks, it occurred to me that this is how I envisioned 25 years ago. This museum has probably educated a huge number of our kids in our community. And then fast forward to now in this magnificent building, I now bring my grandchildren to the museum. In its 25-year history, the museum has served three million guests. The underpinning is always folks who believe that they can leave something more permanent behind for others that will follow. And that's really what we've done here. We've started uh, an institution. We have a great foundation that's been built over the last 25 years. The Children's Museum is relevant to everybody, no matter your socioeconomic status, no matter your cultural background, is open for everyone. And that's part of our mission, to bring all these people together in a space and have them have an experience that's different and innovative and fresh and new and challenging. And we want to continue that. And we want to make sure that in this next 25 years to take the organization to places that it has not been before. We need to make sure that everyone knows that we're here and that we become for Las Vegas what children's museums and science museums across the country are for their communities, a part of the fabric of that community.